All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So as you guys might know, the global thank you celebration will be starting in about three days from now, and it's gonna be bringing with it a new dual Dokkan vest between the Int Gotenks and the Tech Boo. And recently, a lot of people have been asking me whether or not I feel like these banners and units are worth you know, their dragon stones, or if they should be saving for something else that's better. In the future so for this video we are going to be you know doing a quick breakdown of uh, both units you know what they do and also talking about their banners potential discounts take a look at their animations and uh, at the end i'll give you guys my personal opinion about you know if i think these units are worth it what people should be doing with their stones but of course the ultimate decision is up to you now before we get into the details and also get into the banners and all that stuff why don't we start by watching their animations because I feel like that's uh, for some people the most important part, right? So uh, we'll start with Gotenks, then we'll move to Boo, and then we'll go from there. So here we go, enjoy Gotenks' animations. Alright, so there you go. That is Gotenks, and I think he has some really good animations, man. I mean, I love Gotenks as a character, so that's probably part of it, but uh, I think the animations, especially the transformations, are really well done. The active skill is great, and um, I like it. So now let's move on to the Boo. Here we go, full screen. Enjoy! <laughs> So there you go, that is the Boo, his animations, they're awesome too. I think both these units have really, really good animations, even though they were released like, uh, how long ago now? April, in April of uh, this year on JP, so that was like seven months ago, right? Or six months ago at least. Um, so they're a little bit older now, but quality of the animation still very top tier, I would say. So that's a good start. Now let's move on to the units themselves and talk about what they do. We'll start with the Gotenks. His leader skill is special pose category, key plus four, HP, attack, and defense, plus 170%. Now this special pose category, I'm gonna be honest, man, it's a, it's basically a throwaway category. Like it's, it's pretty bad. So uh, I'm not gonna highlight anybody. I'll just like show you guys what's in it and you guys can determine for yourselves whether or not you're a fan, but yeah, it's probably one of the 
worst new categories, if not the worst new category we've uh, received recently. All right, so that's special pose. And uh, he also is a youth category leader. Keep plus three HP and attack plus 170% and defense plus 130%. Super attack greatly raises defense for one turn, causes immense damage. And passive is key plus one, attack and defense plus 100% and transforms when conditions are met. And he transforms starting from the third turn from start of battle. Links, signature posed, Saiyan Warrior Race, Saiyan Lineage, Innocence, Fuse Fighter, Supreme Power, Gears Battle, categories are Fusion, Hybrid Saiyans, Majin Buu Saga, Super Saiyan 3, Transformation Boost, Youth, Super Saiyans, Final Trump Card, Special Pose, Rapid Growth, and Saviors. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 categories, man, that's crazy. So at the very least, it's going to fit on a lot of teams, so that's good. And he transforms into Super Saiyan Gotenks on the third turn. Uh, Super Attack greatly raises defense for one turn, causes immense damage, and great chance of stunning the enemy, which is 70% for two turns. And passive is key plus two, attack and defense plus 100%, and then high chance of attack plus 50%, with a high chance of an additional attack plus 50%, high chance of defense plus 50%, with a high chance of an additional defense plus 50%, medium chance of launching an additional super attack. So as you can see, this dude uh, is just super RNG based, right? Like you could start off with key plus two and attack and defense plus 100% and then get nothing else. Or you can get 150% attack and 150% defense or 200% attack, 100% defense. There's a lot of different combinations you could have here because like all of this part is just purely based on RNG, right? And he also has a 30% chance or 25% chance of launching an additional super attack. So as far as how good this form is, it kind of depends. If you have the full passive active, then he's amazing. If you have some of the passive active, he's still pretty good. If you have only this part, then he's gonna be kind of mediocre, right? And he gets Super Saiyan and Golden Warrior as new links, and his active skill transforms him into Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, and this can be activated when HP is 70% or more starting from the fourth turn after the initial transformation into Super Saiyan Gotenks. So once you transform into Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, his super attack greatly raises attack and defense for three turns, causes immense damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy. Passive is attack and defense plus 100% plus an additional attack plus 100% when performing a super attack, key plus three, and great chance of launching an additional super attack for four turns from start of turn and great chance is 70%. So that is Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks for you. Overall, I would say um, he is a good unit. He's definitely a good unit, especially in the Super Saiyan 3 form. This guy does some crazy, crazy damage. My only real issue with him, as well as the Tech Boo actually, is that it takes them a while to reach their final transformation, their most powerful form, right? And before that, they're just okay they're decent but not too impressive so uh yeah that's the go tanks now let's move on to boo oh that's the uh special pose category uh here's the tech boo leader skill is margin power category key plus four hp attack and defense plus 170 percent or artificial life forms category key plus three hp and attack plus 170 percent defense plus 100 and 30% super attack greatly raises attack for one turn causes immense damage and passive is key plus one attack plus 100% reduces damage received by 40% exchange with Majin Buu pure evil when conditions are met and the exchange happens starting from the third turn from start of battle links are Majin the innocent Kamehameha infinite regeneration revival wall standing tall and fierce battle and categories are Resurrected Warriors, Majin Buu Saga, Transformation Boost, Time Travelers, Artificial Life Forms, Kamehameha, Majin Power, and Power Absorption. So eight categories, not as many as Gotenks, but still a ton. And uh, after the exchange, the Evil Buu Super Attack greatly raises attack for one turn, causes immense damage, and seals enemy super attack. Passive is key plus two, attack plus 150%, reduces damage received by 40%, high chance of stunning the attacked enemy which is uh 40 in this case and medium chance of evading enemies attack which is 25 percent his new links are brutal beatdown berserker and fear and faith and his active skill is absorption absorbs majin buu good can be activated 
when HP is 70% or more starting from the fourth turn after exchange once only. So once you become a super boo, super attack greatly raises attack and defense for three turns, causes immense damage, and seals super attack. Passive is key plus three, attack plus 220%, reduces damage received by 50%, chance of performing a critical hit plus 12%. Her rainbow key sphere obtained and that's pretty much all you got to know about the boo so there you go guys we just covered the tech boo and go tanks i think they're both very very good units in fact in their final forms i would say they're two of the best turs in the game like top 10 for sure but the issue once again is that it takes them a while to get there a minimum of six turns often seven turns so for shorter events like dokkan events you're probably never gonna be able to see these transformations like for Extreme Super Battle Road, maybe you can see them for like one turn or two turns and uh, for obviously Legendary Goku event, Infinite Dragon Ball History, you'll see them for a good amount of time. But that being said, I don't love how long it takes to get them into their most powerful states and when you compare them to some of the other TURs that are on the horizon who just start off like super super powerful from the jump like without having to wait so many turns uh, it makes them seem once again much less impressive but now let's move on to the next thing which would be the banners and uh, we'll just start with Gotenks because we've been doing that for everything else today and uh, Gotenks' banner I would say is pretty good it's it's decent but it's also not amazing by dual dual confess standards okay so we got Gotenks himself, of course. We got the Int Super Saiyan 2 Angel Goku, Biz Piccolo, Tech uh, Trunks. Why did I blank on Trunks? Tech Trunks, AGL Gogeta, and then two Super Saiyan 3 Gotenkses. Okay, now this Gotenks has an easy A, and this Gotenks will eventually get an Extreme Z Awakening probably within the next, you know, six months or so. And uh, yeah, there's some really good units here, but when it comes to dual Dokkan Fest, we have a very high standard for how much value there should be, like how many top tier units should be featured. And in my opinion, when you compare this to some of the recent dual Dokkan Fest we've seen, it doesn't quite match up. Like it's good, but this feels much more like a regular Dokkan Festival banner as opposed to part of a dual Dokkan Festival, you know? So there's the Gotenks banner. And the Boo banner is actually very similar. It's uh, just kind of the other half of a lot of these dual Dokkan fests. So we have the Tech Boo. We have uh, Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta that transforms into Majin Vegeta. We have AGL Zamasu, Biz Broly, AGL Metal Cooler, and then STR Super Boo and Tech Super Saiyan 3 Broly. And uh, once again, if this was a regular Dokkan festival banner, I would say you know, solid value, but since it's part of a dual Dokkan Fest, it doesn't really do it for me. You know, it, it really doesn't. So uh, when it comes to these banners, I do have to view them through the lens of a dual Dokkan Fest and compare it to other dual Dokkan Festival banners we've seen. And I would rate these like a, you know, 6.5, maybe if I'm being generous, seven. Uh, I'm not great with ratings, but I would say these are pretty mid-tier banners for a dual token fest but on the bright side there should be discounts just like last year and of course we already know that there's going to be tickets right so uh, taking a look at last year's thank you celebration dual token fest the steps went as follows so for step one it was 30 stones step two was 35 stones step three was 45 stones so in total that's a hundred and uh, 10 stones right for three multis plus a free multi so four multis and then three tickets on top of that for each multi so nine tickets for the first three steps so essentially for 110 stones you're getting almost five multis worth of summons and this of course applies to both banners so for 220 stones you're going to be getting close to 10 multis between the two banners which is absolutely amazing now with all that said I need you guys to keep in mind what we can expect within the next few months on global okay because in december i'm expecting the release of these guys right here the lr super saiyan blue kaoken goku and super saiyan blue evolution vegeta and then after that we should be getting lr jiren's 
uh, legendary summon banner and sometime in January slash February we'll probably get uh, this guy first the uh, transforming Frieza into Angel Golden Frieza and then after that would be Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Now somewhere in the mix might also be a global first unit around Christmas or New Year's so uh, just a lot of great stuff to look forward to on global and when you look at these banners and look at these units it's kind of hard to get excited for uh, Gotenks and Boo, at least at least in my opinion. Maybe you're the biggest Gotenks or Boo fan out there and these two are the most hype units slash characters to you. Obviously if that's the case then summon to your heart's content but if you guys want my advice for what I think the average global player should be doing with their stones when these banners drop, I'm gonna say unless you really want Gotenks and Boo, skip these banners. Okay, I just think the value here for both the new units as well as the banners overall is not enough to justify spending your stone so close to the release of a lot of really OP units like the Blue Boys or Jiren or Golden Frieza or Gogeta and possibly a busted global first, right? And even if you do want these guys and you plan to summon, I wouldn't do more than the first rotation with the discounts, right? So three multis plus the free one plus the tickets and that's it. I would call it a day from there regardless of what happens. Obviously, that's just my advice. You guys are free to do whatever you want with your stones. And uh, with that said, that's going to be the video, guys. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys are thinking. Will you be summoning on these banners when they drop on global in a couple days and if so then how many stones do you plan to spend oh and one last thing did watching this video affect your decision in any way like were you planning to not summon and now you want to summon or were you planning to summon and now you're going to be saving okay let me know that as well but with all that said guys that's it that's the video as always if you liked today's video then make sure to like the damn video and if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.